come up to the gospel message this morning. I call your attention this morning to the gospel according to Dr. Luke. We will look at the 24th chapter of the gospel of Luke, verses 13 down through verse 19, and then we will skip down to verse 30 and verse 31. Those of you that have your Bibles, and those of you that can stand, uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 17. You will find these words. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, what matter of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? Mm -hmm. Today I will talk about talk of the town. Mm -hmm. Talk of the town. Talk of the town. You may be seated. I know some of you get on the phone and call up your friend and say, what is the talk <laughs> of the town? What are they talking about? Mm -hmm. The talk of the town. Talk of the town. You don't care how accurate it is. You don't care how. You just want to know the talk of the town. Of the town. My Lord, my Lord. I know if you go to my old barber shop, you can hear the talk of the town, and boy, was well, none of that stuff true. <laughs> but they was talking because it happened to be the talk of the town. Praise God. That's what we want to talk about today, the talk of the town. Yes. And for your understanding today, there was a young man that was about to commit suicide. My Lord. And he said, listen, I'm going to take a walk, and I'm going to walk up to a bridge, mm -hmm. and that's about a half a mile from me. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, but the only thing that will stop me from committing suicide is that in my walk, uh -huh. if I meet someone well, who's smiling, come on now. if I meet someone who is personable, if I meet someone who is friendly, yeah. then I won't jump over the bridge when I get there. Right. Uh, so as he was walking, and as the story goes, they didn't tell the end, but I'm going to put the end in there. As this young man was walking, mm -hmm. and he was about to commit suicide, and he said, all I want to do is to find that one person, remember now, that's smiling, that's friendly, that's personable, and that's going to talk to me. Yeah. And all of a sudden, as he is walking, he meets you. All right. Did y'all hear? Yes, sir. He met you. He met right. you. Now, what's going to be the end? Yeah. Is he going to jump? No. Y'all ain't talking to me. What's going to be the end? When he meet you? Yes. Is he going to meet somebody that's friendly? It's going to be somebody with a smiling face. Right. It's going to be somebody that's personable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, it's going to be somebody so mad and mouth poked out like they couldn't pick some peas out of a bottom of a job. Is it going to be somebody so messed up, tied up, and tangled up? Or is it going to be somebody smiling? Yes, somebody that can lift up his spirit? Yes, or is it going to be somebody pressed down? Yes, sir. It is going to be somebody that not only is he about to jump off the bridge, but if you're going to meet somebody that will grab him by his arm and both of you all will jump off the bridge. Right on, right on. Listen. Yeah. You all call me up and tell me about that, okay? <laughs> What's going to happen to this young man when he meets you mm -hmm. as he goes to jump off that bridge? Today I will preach from absolutely one of my favorite scriptures in, in the Bible. The road to Emmaus. Today I will teach that the path to our blessings is through suffering. Yes. And that's the thing that the world does not want to understand. Well, that the path through our blessings is suffering. The path through Jesus blessing us is he had to go through suffering yes. for us. Yes. And that's the thing that the world did not understand. And so we see here, as we come up to our lesson text today, Jesus is no longer 
in the grave. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Jesus is no longer hanging on the cross. Well, yes, sir. Jesus is now alive. He's alive. I know some of you might say, well, Pastor, uh, Easter Sunday, you didn't tell us all how Jesus got beat up and all that. Jesus had risen. Yes, he had. And that's what we need to understand. He is alive. Yes. And because he is alive, we can face tomorrow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We had Good Friday. It was supposed to be Bad Friday. But because God is God, it became Good Friday. Yes, sir. But Jesus is now alive. We serve a living Savior. Living God. Yes, sir. No, we yes, serve sir. a living Savior. So as we come up to our lesson text, now we see, starting at verse uh, 13, uh, in this particular chapter, the 24th chapter. And Jesus, turning unto them, I flipped too many pages. Verse 13 of the 24th chapter, and behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem for about three scores furloughs. Now, in our lesson text, we find that these two disciples, now these two disciples that we're talking about today, they were not part of the 12 disciples. They were part of the larger disciples that Jesus had encountered. But these men were walking back to Emmaus. Mm -hmm. Now Emmaus from Jerusalem was seven miles. Mm -hmm. Now I told you, these people in antiquity, they were in shape. They were gonna walk seven miles. You know, we walked three miles on our walk, right? And, and you know how we be huffing and puffing when we get back. <laughs> but now these guys, when they walk seven miles, uh, they're going to walk from Jerusalem back to Emmaus. And as they were walking back to Emmaus, they had begun to have a conversation, uh, as we can see here uh, on this road to Emmaus. And as Jesus encountered them, encountered the two, and they talked together. Yeah. And all these things which had happened, they talked about all these things that happened as they were walking back to Emmaus. They were talking about all these things that had happened. They were talking about the six trials that Jesus had that was illegal. Mm -hmm. They were talking about the open crucifixion that they allowed. Mm -hmm. They were talking about how when they could have uh, um, allowed Jesus to go free, they cried out for Barabbas. They talking about mm -hmm. how, how Jesus was beaten 39 times, and, and they're talking about how, how it got so dark at the sixth to the ninth hour. They encountered all of that darkness. They're talking about doing that darkness that was an earthquake. They're talking about all of these things, but they're also talking about uh, the thing that Jesus told them when he told them, did he say, if I be lifted up? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They didn't understand what he was talking about when he was talking about, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. He was saying, if I suffer, if I go through suffering, yes, and then it went back to, to, to Genesis uh, chapter 3, verse 15, where the, the serpent's head was bruised, mm -hmm. and, and the seed that Jesus healed was bruised. That means that the serpent head was bruised because he was killed, but Jesus' heel was bruised. That meant that he suffered, yes. that Jesus had warned them about he had to come to do this suffering. Yes, he had sir. to come to pay the price for the sins of all humanity. So he went to all of this stuff, and so they're walking along, and they're talking about all of this stuff that Jesus had to go through. They're talking about how he was carrying that cross of God's up the hill and how he collapsed and Joseph of Arimathea had to come get it. They're talking about all of the things that happened to them. But you see, they had a lot of hope yes, sir. Yes, sir. in Jesus. Yes, sir. They had hope that Jesus was going to turn all of this Roman rule all around. They had hope that he was going to become the Messiah, but they didn't know what kind of Messiah he was going to become. You know, I saw a long line downtown one day and these people was in line. So I just asked him, I said, well, what y'all in line for? Mm -hmm. One man said, well, I don't know. I just saw all these folks in line. And I got in line. <laughs> <laughs> Must be something. <laughs> yeah. You know, isn't that crazy? <laughs> you, know, you know, she just got in line. She got in line because everybody was in line. So, 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 so we see here that they're walking and they're talking. And, and, and they have become saddened because now it says, uh, it, it, it says in that scripture, and it came to pass that while they command, while they communicated together and, re and reasoned, 
Jesus himself drew near unto them yes. and went with them. But their eyes was holy that they should not know him. So now we see here that their eyes were become holy. And now, now they're walking. I don't know if Jesus walked up to them and caught up with them or Jesus was walking and they caught up with him. But that's not important. All of the thing that's important is now is they were walking together. Yes. Now all of a sudden they're walking and having this long discussion mm. about what had happened in Jerusalem. Now all of a sudden Jesus walks up in the midst of them. Can you imagine mm. walking down the street and all of a sudden you and one of your best friends are just walking and talking and then all of a sudden somebody appears in the midst of you. Yes. In verse 17, my key verse, and Jesus said unto them, what matter of communication are these that you have one to another and that you walk and are sad? Mm -hmm. Why are you so sad? Jesus said you are walking. Now, I don't know. Maybe it was in their countenance. Maybe it was the sadness was in their face. Maybe the sadness was in their voice. But all of a sudden, Jesus knew yes. that they were sad. Yes. Yes. Oh, you know when somebody's sad, don't you? Yes. You know how they look, you know how they act, you know how they talk, they can't even look you in the, in the eyes, they just say it. Jesus said, well, what are you talking about? Why are you so sad? But Jesus realized that they, they, they realized that their Messiah was going to come, and they had put all their hope in Jesus being their Messiah, but now they realized that they had crucified him. My Lord. They had realized that they had killed Jesus. Killed Jesus. And they, and they tell you further on down in this chapter, they tell you that it was the priests and the Jewish leaders that killed Jesus. It wasn't the Romans. The Romans wanted to let him go. Pilate said, I want to wash my hands with this thing. Yes, but, they say, but they say, Jesus asked him, why are you so sad? Yes. And then in that 18th verse, and one of them, whose name is Caiaphas, and answered and said unto them, art thou the only stranger in Jerusalem and has not known the things which have come to pass in these days. He yes, said, Listen, you must be. They told Jesus, now I can imagine telling this to Jesus. Mm -hmm. They said, you must be the only person in town. Yes. The talk of the town has gone out, and here you are walking up and in here. You're the only person in town that don't know about what happened. Well, where you come from? Yes, sir. They said, you don't know what has happened. That's all people have been talking about. They've been talking about what happened to Jesus. Yes, sir. Now you walk up here, you don't even know anything about this. Come on now. Come on now. Yeah. And so Jesus, you know, sometimes it's best for people to underestimate you than to overestimate you. So as Jesus walks up in the midst of them, and they say, where does this stranger come from? This stranger danger, this stranger that's coming up here in the midst of us that don't know nothing about what has happened. Where have you been? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto them, what things? Mm -hmm. They said, you don't know about these things that Jesus said. <laughs> what things? What things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus, he said, they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deeds and words before God. And all the people. They're talking about, we were talking about Jesus yes. of Nazareth. Yes. You see, they say he was a prophet. Mm -hmm. They didn't say he was the son of God. Mm -hmm. They see, well, say he was a prophet and he had all these miracles and he's done all of these things and, 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 and now they have killed him. They have crucified him. And, it, and they say, and now this, this is what I like in, in that uh, 20th verse it says, and now the chief priest and all the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified yes. him. Yes, sir. We are sad because they have crucified, crucified him. They have killed him. They have put him in the tomb. They have hung him on the cross. Even when we had that three hours of darkness and the earthquake and all that kind of stuff, they crucified him. Yes, sir. And then let me skip down to verse 30 and 31. I told you I used to collect comic books and I always have to get to the end to see what happened to my hero. Uh -huh. Verse 30 said, and it came to pass. See, see, they, they were walking the seven miles. So it got time for them to go on into the mail. But, but they begged Jesus. They said, listen, come go home with us. We, we got to finish this conversation because it sounds like you know something about them. And Jesus started talking and explaining things to them. You can see it down here. And Jesus started telling them all about this stuff. And, and as they walked, Jesus was explaining this stuff to them. So they said, listen, we don't want you to go. We want you to come home. 
you better be careful when you invite Jesus to your house. Right. Uh, you know, some of you, you know, you, you got to clean up first, don't you? All right. <laughs> I'm not talking about your house, I'm talking about you. <laughs> you, you. You know, so you better be careful. So it came to pass, as he sat and ate with them, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. As they went home and as Jesus went home with them, they had begun to break the bread. Now, pay attention to what Jesus does. Because this is what Jesus does when he comes to you. Jesus sits in the place of the host. Yes. Jesus is a guest in the house. Yes. But he sits in the place of the host. And as he sits in the place of the host, he takes the bread and he breaks the bread. Mm -hmm. And as he is breaking the bread, they remember what he did in the upper room. Yes, they, they, in the breaking of the bread, in the breaking of the bread, they saw Jesus. They, they, saw, they, they saw Jesus when he said, take this bread and break it and, and then do this as often as you see yes, this. Yes, yes, he, he, was, as he was breaking the bread. Yes, they saw him. Yes, what is it going to take for you to see him? Mm -hmm. They saw him. And he vanished out of their sight. Now pay attention. Because this was Jesus in his glorified body. See, when Jesus had his glorified body, when he was in the tomb, he could get up in his glorified body and he could walk through the, the, the clothes that he had on. He could walk through the walls of the tomb. In his glorified body, he could go up in the upper room and he didn't have to go in no door. He could come through the walls of the yes, house because yes, he had his glorified body. His body had been glorified and now he could go anywhere he wanted to go because his body was being glorified. You know, in the ascension, when he went back to heaven, he could ascend because his body had already been prepared for heaven so he could go back to heaven because he had the glorified body. That's why he could vanish. Because his body had been glorified. He could now vanish. He could not go anywhere he wanted to go because his body was glorified. Yes. Praise God. So he vanished when they saw him in the breaking of the bread. You know, I wonder sometimes when I preach if people are getting a clear understanding Mm -hmm. about what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, my wife says sometimes I talk fast and people may not understand. But <laughs> anyway, I got some. I got five questions. Today. Oh yeah, go ahead. Five questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. My first question: What areas in our life are we like the two disciples who are who were disappointed or sad about the work of God or the work of the church? Mm -hmm. When is it? that you are sad? What is it about the church and God that lets you down and make you sad? When is it that you're walk, walking on your road to Emmaus and you have become disappointed mm -hmm. with the church? When is it? The answer is we have our preconceived notions about God and about the church and we become disappointed. We must be willing <coughs> as were the two disciples, to change and to think about the manners of the revealed truth. Yes. We have to have the revealed truth of God in order for us not to be disappointed. Yes. My next question, what condition should a Christian enter into a conversation with others about spiritual matters? <laughs> what is it? What time is it or what condition is it that you have something to offer to people that are talking about spiritual matters? I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> Only when we are in possession of knowledge and experience that we can share with others. Never get into an argument about opinions about things. Mm -hmm. Only when we can share knowledge, I'm talking about knowledge, yeah. in fallible proof. Also, not just knowledge, but when you can share about your experience. Yes. See, nobody can refute your experience. Mm -hmm. But when you get into this back and forth about opinions, mm -hmm. you're going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. What does this lesson teach us about Jesus going home with us? Mm -hmm. What happened in this lesson? What does this lesson teach you about Jesus going home with you? 
The main thing, I'm so glad you asked that question. The main thing that it teaches is that we have to invite Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus is not going to force himself on you. Nah. Right. Jesus is not going to break in your house. Yeah. He's not that kind of God. Jesus has to be invited. You see, you see, these these disciples, they, they were so fascinated about Jesus explaining to them about what happened in Jerusalem that they invited him to their home. Can you invite God to your home? But what is it now that you need to do if God wants to go home with you after church? Do you need to push that wet bar out in the street? Well. Do you need to take certain paintings down in your house? What is it that you need to do to take God home with you? Yes, right. yes sir. But first, remember, he has to be invited. Yes. How can fellowship, number four, how can fellowship with other Christians help us in our daily walk with Christ? How can? You see, these two guys was talking. How important is it for you to fellowship with other Christians, or can you do this thing alone? Mm -hmm. I'm glad you asked. To try to maintain one's faith without the support of other believers will increase the danger and weaken your belief system. Mm -hmm. We need to have fellowship with one another. We need to talk to one another. We need to share with one another. We need to be broken before one another. We need to be able to communicate Yes. With one another. Yes. And my last question. How did the two disciples see Jesus in the breaking of the bread? Mm. In the breaking of the bread, they saw the suffering. They saw the fact that Jesus said, if I have to suffer. Mm. See, see, the reason that they lost hope was they thought that they could get to where they were going without any suffering. See, the Pharisees thought that they were already saved, but they didn't go through any suffering. Sometimes, you know, just, uh, we have to go through some suffering. We have to go through some struggle. If there's no struggle, there's no progress, and we have to go through that. So what he's saying is, in the breaking of the bread, in the, in the looking at Jesus breaking that bread and sharing it, he was talking about his body that was beaten and that was tormented. He was talking about everything that happened to him on Calvary. He was talking about when he was on Calvary, how God took. Jesus' righteousness and gave it to us and how God took our sins and put it on Jesus. They were looking at all of these things that, that, that God was doing through Jesus and they were looking in there they were trying to understand that and then when they saw Jesus, he vanished because like I told you, his body was glorified. But just like I preached last week when he got up and he said, all power oh, of heaven and earth is in my hand. But he wanted us to know that he would never leave us but he would never forsake us. And because that the very fact, the very fact that he's alive, the very fact that he lives, the very fact that Jesus is alive, no matter where you go and no matter what you go up against, yes, he sir. has destroyed all the enemies that you can yes. ever find. No yes, matter sir. what you're going up against, there's no weapon that's ever formed against you going to prosper. God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and his glory. No matter what you're going through in this life, God is going to be with you. God can overcome cancer. God can overcome that. See, when you take something and you bury it, it dies. Mm -hmm. But in order for it to germinate and come back alive, when you take a seed and put it in the ground, and when that seed dies, that seed come up, and you got a beautiful plant, and you got it all spread out, Jesus say, listen, if you put me in that grave, and I get up out that grave and I give all power to the church. We're going to have churches all over the world. We're going to have churches in Japan. We're going to have churches in Korea. We're going to have churches in America. We're going to have churches everywhere because I have gotten up out of that grave. And now since I have gotten up out that grave, I have germinated. He said, if I be lifted up, if I do this suffering for you, Sean, if I do this suffering for you, if I take on the role of that, that suffering servant, if I go and suffer because of what you have done, 
your sin. They, when they, and, and Isaiah makes it plain. When they crucified Jesus, they thought he had done wrong, but he hadn't done no wrong because he was there for me and you. He was in a substituted yes, position yes, for us. Yes, but because he lived today, yes, because only that yes, that he lives, yes, he you can overcome drugs. Yes, yes. Because he lives, you can face tomorrow. Because he lives, no matter what happened to you, 14-year-old teenage pregnancy, God can overcome all of those things. Because he lives today, you can face whatever you're up against because he is an almighty God. He is a mighty God, and he will supply everything that you need because he is God, Emmanuel, with you. No matter where you go, God is with you. Even when you forget about God, he's still with you. Even when you go to the riverboat, if you're a child of God, he's still with you. No matter when you walk out of there and lost all your money, God said, I'm still with you. You messed up, but I'm still with you. No matter when you find up again. God wants you to know that he's a second time God. He's willing to give you a second chance. 